Today we're talking about buoyancy, right? And so the buoyancy is when you take something and you put it into water, you put it into air, or something like that, and then the environment, the substance you put it in, it supports it. So when you jump into a pool, you're held up by the water somewhat. A hot air balloon is held up by the air around it, okay? So I have this piece of metal. It has about five and a half newtons that it's being pulled down by gravity. And then if I lower it into the water here, the water is going to hold it up. It's going to support it a little bit. And there's a cool rule we can find out, and that is however much water this displaces, that's how much it's, that, that weight of that water will be how much less this is going to uh, um, be pulled down. So here we're going to slowly lower it down into the water, and you'll see that some water runs out of the jar. There we go. All right, it's totally in the water there. All right, and we just displaced some water. Okay, so now instead of five and a half, we are at about four and a half newtons. Okay, so we've lost about one newtons worth of uh, force on the on the piece of metal. Okay, well, where did it go? Well, it's down here in this water here. Like this water should weigh about one newton. So if I put it back up into this part here, we're back at five and a half newtons again. Okay? So the amount of water that this piece of metal displaced is the exact amount that the wa that, that piece of metal is supported. So in the episode where we found out how dense I was, right, we know that I have a volume of about sixty nine liters. So when I jump in a swimming pool, I displace 69 liters of water, okay? And the mass of that water, that's how much uh, of a buoyant force I have on me when I'm in the water. So I'm held up. So I would feel, if I put myself on a scale in a swimming pool, I would have that much less force registered by the scale. My mass stays the same, but that's a whole other argument, all right? So what we have here is a tube of water with a cork floating on each end. Right? And the water is supporting the corks, right? Because the, the corks displace the water, and so they have a buoyant force underneath them. They're floating up here. And if you remember about circular motion, right? When we make this go in a circle, we're going to have a centripetal force pushing thing, pulling things to the middle, all right? And that's going to basically mean that the water weight will be kind of pulled to the outside as these things supporting, and the corks are going to float in towards the middle. Circular motion going on here combined with buoyant force. So you get this thing spinning, there we go, and they meet in the middle, they're floating at the middle due to the centripetal force pulling, uh, or yeah, pulling the water the other way, and then they float back again. Voila, beautiful. Now if you bring balloons home, helium filled balloons home, for someone's birthday party in the car, and you hit the brakes really fast, what happens? Well, when you hit the brakes really fast in the car, you kind of pull forward because you've got momentum saying you're going to slide forward. But if you watch balloons carefully, they actually go the other way. All right, here I've got an air-filled balloon and a helium-filled balloon in a little glass box to keep the air from moving. And so if I pull it this way really fast, right, uh, our, the inertia says that they should stay still, right, and so they should end up fading back towards the back of the box, right? So I'm going to pull it real fast. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay. So when I pulled it really fast, you saw that uh, the top one swung back a little bit and the bottom one swung forward. Let's try that again. Okay, not when I was done, but when I was first pushing it, pulling it. What's going on here? Well, the key thing to remember is that not only are there balloons in this box, but there's air. Okay, when I pull the cart really hard, the air actually gets squished towards the back of the box. All right, and so since there's more air in the back of the box than the front, right, then the helium-filled balloon gets pushed and gets supported forward, actually a buoyant force again, where the top one is filled with air, right, it gets pulled back along with the regular air, and so it's pulled back. So there you go. So next time you're taking balloons home from the uh, store, if you, want, if you have convinced your parents to hit the brakes real hard, you can watch the helium balloons float backwards in the car. Woo!